Emma's immediate family were active members of the Sinaloa cartel. Emma came into the media spotlight along with El Chapo's trial. Then, they joked about their kids growing up and joining the cartel soon. By now, Emma couldn't hide her involvement in the Sinaloa cartel anymore. There isn't a more notorious cartel kingpin alive than El Chapo, or Joaquin Artivaldo Guzman. He exported more narcotics into the United States than anyone before him, ordered multiple assassinations, and bribed his way out of prison just about a hundred times. But in 2016, he was captured for one last time. He is now inside a maximum security prison in Colorado. So now, all eyes fell on El Chapo's wife, Emma Coronel Aispero. What's Emma's stance on El Chapo's business? And how is El Chapo as a husband? Is Emma even his legitimate wife? Let's explore these questions and many more in the following video. Emma Coronel Aispero was born in San Francisco, California, July 2nd, 1989. She was the daughter of Bianca and Inez. Her father was a cattle rancher, but he was also an active member of the Sinaloa cartel. That's right, Emma's dad worked for El Chapo. In 1989, when Emma was born, El Chapo was already a feared criminal. He was born in 1957, making him 32 years old her senior year. In fact, El Chapo has children older than Emma. His firstborn daughter, Alejandria, was born in 1977, and it was exactly in 1989 that El Chapo became the leader of the notorious Sinaloa cartel, killing his way to the top of the pyramid. But Emma wasn't the kind to be shocked at this kind of life. Her father was in the business, and her uncle, Ignacio Coronel Villarreal, was one of Mexico's most dangerous cartel criminals. Emma grew up in a dual world. On one hand, nasty cartel men. On the other hand, high school beauty pageants and California riches. When she was in high school, Emma won the coffee and guava beauty pageant. Of course, this is how she came to El Chapo's attention. The two started a heated relationship right after the pageant. It's hard to say what was the trigger. El Chapo's menacing army filling the room, Emma's lust for money and status, or innocent love. Emma celebrated her 18th birthday on her wedding day, as she married El Chapo in a lavish ceremony. He was 50. Among the wedding guests were 10 of high-ranking Mexican army officials and politicians. Emma and El Chapo's relationship had been murky from the start, at least from the outside. When the two got married, Emma claimed she had no idea what her husband did for a living. First of all, Emma's immediate family were active members of the Sinaloa cartel. Second of all, El Chapo was already a famous fugitive. He'd been arrested in Guatemala in 1993 for murder and drug trafficking. He was extradited to Mexico and sentenced to 20 years in prison, but he bribed his way out of the prison in 2001. It turns out he spent around $2.5 million in bribing officials so that he could escape in a laundry cart. So there's no way Emma couldn't know what her husband did, but she could deny it to the press so as to appear innocent. But there was another problem. El Chapo has had many wives, at least another two or three before Emma, according to Annabel Hernandez's book, Emma and the Other Narco Women. El Chapo never divorced his first wife, Alejandria Salazar. This means that Emma might not be El Chapo's legitimate wife. When Emma was confronted with this by the media, she just said that she and El Chapo were married under the law of the divine. El Chapo is known for his many marriages and dozens of affairs. Is Emma truly blind to this or is she protecting her husband in the eyes of the media? Indeed, throughout Emma's interviews, she maintains a clear stance of defending El Chapo, no matter the gravity of the accusations. Bueno, yo pienso que es lo que haría cualquier esposa en mi lugar, ¿no? Este estar con con su esposo en momentos uh, Difíciles que son los que está pasando en este momento. Emma and El Chapo were married in 2007. In 2011, Emma gave birth to twin girls, Imali and Maria. Emma went to California to give birth. 
as she had dual citizenship. ¿Ustedes por qué deciden tenerlas a ellas en California? Como yo nací allá, se supuso que era buena idea que también fueran ciudadanas americanas. ¿Por qué es buena idea ser ciudadano americano? Por si quieres vivir en otro país, pues Estados Unidos se me hace buena elección. So Emma is not completely oblivious to the dangers of raising her children in the Sinaloa cartel. There's another clue here. On the girls' birth certificates, the father is completely left out. That's right. It looks like Emma is protecting the girls from any run-ins with the law. At the time of their birth, there was a $5 million reward for El Chapo's capture. And after that, a long chain of arrests and escapes began. In 2014, El Chapo was arrested and sentenced to a prison in Mexico. Of course, this was his second time in prison. And by now, he had amassed an even bigger fortune. He wasn't going to stay put for too long. This time, El Chapo was held in a maximum security prison, so he couldn't pull the laundry cart stunt anymore. But he learned something. Although the prison was filled with security cameras, the showers were camera free. So he had people dig a tunnel underneath his shower. And guess what? His mile long tunnel led straight to a construction site where Emma had just purchased a property. So El Chapo escaped into his new home. By now, Emma couldn't hide her involvement in the Sinaloa cartel anymore. Whether she helped her husband escape out of love or fear, we might never know. In any case, El Chapo couldn't be free forever. He'd escaped from prison twice, and the DEA was fighting hard to have him extradited to the US and tried for his crimes on American soil. In 2016, El Chapo was once again arrested. When he was sent to New York in 2017, El Chapo looked very scared. It was like, for the first time, he was coming to terms with the gravity of his actions. Or perhaps he shed a tear when he realized he would never escape prison again. During his trial, he was found guilty of 10 charges, with several people, including El Mayo's family, testifying against him. This conviction, we expect, will bring a sentence of life without the possibility of parole. It is a sentence from which there is no escape and no return. Stories of murder, bribery, and violent trafficking earned Chapo a life sentence. One witness even testified to El Chapo making a $100 million bribe to a former Mexican president. But when Emma was interviewed during El Chapo's 2018 trial, she said the witness had lied in order to get a lighter sentence. Pero pues obviamente hay que recordar que esas son personas que tienen, que les dieron vida, ¿no? Entonces pues ellos van a, a decir cualquier cosa o para tener algún beneficio, entonces pues no... No me, no me, no me clavo mucho en, en, en esas cosas. Emma came into the media spotlight along with El Chapo's trial. She was at his trial every single day, waving hello and blowing kisses to him across the sea of people. This generated quite the attention on TV. Ahora yo también te he visto que estás, eh, desde que tú llegas se le ilumina la cara al chico. Es algo que nunca habíamos visto que los periodistas cuando vimos las audiencias, pero cuando tú entras a corte se le ilumina la cara. Te saluda. ¿Qué sientes en ese momento cuando lo ves de esa manera? No, pues muy contenta. Muy contenta de que a pesar de, lo, de la situación en la que está pasando, de lo fuerte que, que es todo esto para él y para nosotros, este, ver lo que sonreía o que, o que se emociona, pues es, es una tranquilidad que me da como que... Pero ah. there was something else that gained attention. Emma remained loyal, no matter what. During the trial, people testified to El Chapo having people tortured and killed. They also testified to his many mistresses. Nothing seemed to affect Emma. That's probably because Emma already knew everything her husband did. A few text messages between the married couple were played in court. The two talked about El Chapo's bloodiest affairs with the casualty of chatting about the shopping list. Then. They joked about their kids growing up and joining the cartel soon. El Chapo wrote, Our Kiki is fearless. I'm going to give her an AK-47 so she can hang with me. Yeah, Emma is not obvious to the Sinaloa cartel. It's all too clear how El Chapo is as a businessman. But the question remains, how is El Chapo as a husband? Emma has never spoken publicly about having El Chapo as a partner. But there are clues here and there. 
The biggest clue is her fierce devotion. She's an extremely faithful wife who supports him through lengthy trials and horrible accusations. It seems like she is the ideal loving wife. But there's another dimension. Emma protects El Chapo fiercely in front of the media. She denies his guilt and points fingers at his enemies. Could she be afraid of El Chapo, controlled by the notorious kingpin just like the rest of his cartel? He really controlled his entire empire, and he did it on purpose. Chapo didn't trust anyone. Does El Chapo control his wife too? Does he dictate what she says to the media? Or is she just trying to ensure a safe life for herself and her two daughters? After all, if she ever admitted to El Chapo's actions, two things could happen. One, El Chapo might want to get his revenge. Two, the authorities might seize her assets. After all, they were obtained on blood money. And who would want to lose such a lavish lifestyle? Here's another clue. When Emma started getting a lot of media attention, she used this to pursue an even more luxurious, albeit independent lifestyle. She created an Instagram account and gathered over a half a million followers. Then she registered a fashion line trademarked called El Chapo. She was planning on launching it soon. She seemed to enjoy the extra attention and decided to even cash in on her newfound fame. She had plans to start her own El Chapo fashion line. Now she wasn't just making the headlines as El Chapo's devoted wife, but as a glamorous New Yorker who people wondered where she got her money from. Well, we all know the answer to that. All the while, she appeared on TV pleading for El Chapo to be treated better in prison. Emma complained that the guards were always chatting outside El Chapo's cell and that his blood pressure was up, almost as if she expected him to have the lavish conditions he had at home. Journalist Annabel Hernandez said that Emma is simply impossible to analyze, and since she isn't easy to read, what she says about El Chapo is also not as simple as it sounds. After El Chapo's arrest in 2016, Emma was asked to do a Los Angeles Times profile. That's when she made it clear she will follow her husband through anything. Emma also described El Chapo as a very level-headed man. When she was confronted with El Chapo's known history of violence toward his ex-wives and mistresses, Emma said she doesn't know of such a thing. He was never violent with her. She also denied the guilt of her father and uncle, who were notorious cartel members and were arrested on trafficking charges. She insisted they'd been wrongfully charged. Slowly but surely, we can see how Emma protects her whole family and is willing to participate in their life of crime. One last clue paints the full picture. In 2021, Emma herself was arrested for conspiracy, trafficking, and helping El Chapo escape prison in 2015. In November 2021, she pleaded guilty and finally admitted her involvement in the Sinaloa cartel. She was sentenced to three years in prison. She also forfeited $1.5 million and will be supervised for four years after her release. The innocent devoted wife mask clearly fell when Emma was arrested. But to this day, she defends her husband fiercely. Is it out of love or fear? Are her kids even safe? Now that the cartel knows she cooperated with the authorities? And will her devotion stand even as the years pass and El Chapo remains behind bars? Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure to let us know what you think about this case in the comment section. Remember to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time.